Okay, so we're going to continue on this week talking about all the different terminology that has to do with relational database systems. So here's another real common one that people hear often called the optimizer or optimization. So people often wonder, they hear this term, you know, what is it? You know, what's it all about? So let's talk about that a few minutes, you know. DB2 has an optimizer, Oracle has an optimizer, SQL Server has an optimizer. All the relational database systems out there have optimizers. So in DB2 optimizers, and, and most of them work typically the same. So we have these object definitions. Okay, what are those? You know, when DBAs do creates, or maybe if you do a create, you know, if you have authorization to do a create, and you create a table, and you code all this DDL up, and you create the table, and it comes back and says, create successful. What happened? Okay, what was created? What went on behind the scenes? You know, so as they're creating these indexes, they're creating these tables, they're creating all these objects, What's going on? Well, what's going on is these relational database systems have a set of what's called system catalog tables. And whenever a DBA creates anything or doesn't alter, if they're going to change what they've already created, there's inserts that are put into these, these object tables, these system catalog tables. So if they create a table called employee and the create comes back and says create successful, the statement I executed was successful, in, the, in DB2, in one of the system catalog tables, it logs that table called employee. So when you write SQL statements and you misspell employee in your from statement, you get an error. How did it know the error? I mean, how did it know that that was the misspelled word? Well, it knows because it goes to the system catalog tables because anything that a DBA creates is automatically logged in these system tables, okay? So when it comes to optimization, it looks at the queries that we're getting and it's going to ultimately come up with what's called an access path. So what it looks at in the access, what it, what it builds in the access path is what's the most efficient way to execute a query. So one of the things it looks at is what are the object definitions? What am I going after in my SQL statement? What are the tables? What are the indexes? What's all the definitions have, you know, based on these objects that, I'm, that I specify in my from statement? Another thing it looks at during its optimization um, step is what are the statistics? You know, on tables that we list in our from clause and our SQL statements that we've been writing, you know, what does DB2 know about it? Are there five rows in the table or is there five million rows in the table? And depending on the number of rows in the table has a huge effect on how DB2 is going to ultimately go access the data and come up with this access path that it thinks is the most efficient. So there's a lot of different statistics that get logged on data once data is loaded into a table. So the DBAs create the objects, somebody comes along, developers or DBAs, and they load all the data into the tables. Okay, once the data is loaded into the tables, DBAs run these utilities in DB2, it's called a run stats utility, that then logs information into the system catalog tables about data distribution information. You know, in the employee table, employees are assigned to departments. How many different department values are there in the employee table? How many different employees are there in the table? How, what's the total number of rows? There's all kinds of data distribution statistics. So for DB2 to find the most efficient way to go after data, based on an SQL statement that we wrote, it needs to know what the index is and what the objects are all about and how they're defined. It needs to know the size and other kind of data distribution information on the data in the tables. And how we write our SQL statement is huge. So we're spending a lot of time on this this week. We'll continue talking about it this week. And how we structure our queries has a huge effect on the access path that DB2 takes to execute the query. So before DB2 will ever just take a query and go out to these data files and start coming up with the data for our result set, it always goes through this optimization process here to come up with what's called an access path, the most efficient way to get the data. Okay, it doesn't want to just go out and flounder through these physical files to grab data to bring them back. You know, and sometimes we may write queries or you get online for your banking system or something, you wait, you wait, you wait, you wait, and then your accounts come up. So what's going on behind the scenes is all this I.O and gathering of the information to come back. So DB2 wants to figure out the fastest way to go get the data. Figuring out the fastest way to get the data has to do with the definitions, the statistics that it knows on the data in the tables, and how we structure our queries. 
and we've been talking about this this week, we'll continue talking about it, and how we structure them has a huge effect on the efficiency and the speed and, and how DB2 chooses an access path that may not be the most efficient access path because we didn't write our SQL statement properly. Although it worked and the data came back and logically it got what we wanted it to, it wasn't the most efficient. So this is what's called optimization. So when, you, when you're in query tools and you're doing ad hoc queries, every time you, you execute a query and the results come back in your query tool, there's optimization that was done behind the scenes as we, as we coded up our query, we sent it to DB2, 10 seconds later or two minutes later we get our data back DB2 went through this optimization, figured out the fastest way to go get the data, and then went and got the data. For you COBOL programmers, this happens in the bind step. You know, what's the bind all about? What's the package all about? When you go through the bind process and DB2 builds a package internal to DB2, it has the optimization and the access pass built for every SQL statement in your program. Okay? 